um, this is SRBL, Seek and Read the Book of the Lord. So, we have a latest update in our beliefs about, um, actually, it's, it, it does not change, but it's a more clarification about why Thomas called Jesus Christ as Lord and God. My Lord and my God. As a, clarif as a clarification still, um, the reason why, because um, when he had seen Christ, had seen the Father, he had no Christ, had no the Father, he had believed in Christ, had believed in the Father. Because the words of Christ, the image of Christ is the Father. So, the characteristic of Jesus Christ is, Jesus Christ actually is the Son. This is the titles of Jesus Christ. The Jesus is Christ, Son of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Prince, Prophet, Teacher, Pastor, Apostle, High Priest, Bishop, Prince of Peace, Mediator, Flesh, Bones, Blood, Emmanuel or God with us, Word of God, Image of the Invisible, and His name is Yeshua or Jesus. How about the titles of God? God is Rock, Savior, Lord, First and the Last, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Ruler or Captain of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Spirit, Light, Love, Word. And God is invisible, God is a spirit, God is light, God is love. And the word was God, and God was the word in original Greek in John 1.1. 1, 1. But the reason why, why Christ called as well as first and the last, Alpha and Omega, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The reason why, because of this. Christ is the word of God. The words that he speak is from the Father. Okay, the words that he's speaking is not from him, but 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 the from the Father that dwell in him. Okay, so <clears throat> in Hebrews one eight also, God called his son. The throne of God is forever and ever. Let's read. But unto the son he said, The throne of God is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God. So this God hath God. Have God. This God is the son. And this, this, and this son have God. And who's that God? That God is the, the father that hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So this God have God, the Father. But we don't have two gods, the Son and the Father. We don't have two gods. But they say that we can we can apply the verse of John 10:30 that I am the Father one. Yes, we can, but we don't we still we don't have one two persons of God. Because the Bible says it's very clear that the person the person of God is one, one person. Let's read in, in, in upper part of the context in Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed her of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory. The Son is the brightness of the glory of God. And what is the glory of God? And the express image of His person. God is invisible. First, um, Colossians 1.15 And Jesus is the image of that invisible God. Okay? And upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So, what does it mean? Who being in the brightness of His glory. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is the King of Kings, right? The glory of God is the Lord of Lords. The glory of God is the, the first and the last. The Rock, the Savior, the Redeemer. We don't have two Savior. We don't have two Rock. We don't have two Lords. We don't have two Redeemer, two first and the last, two Mighty Gods, two Wonderful Counselor, two Everlasting Father. We, we all agree with that. But... Here is a thing. 
the the image of God is Jesus Christ. We don't have two images. One image and one God. One image of the invisible and one invisible. Who is that invisible? God is the invisible. One invisible and what one image of the invisible. So it means if we see Christ, this is a visible God. But it doesn't mean that we have two gods. But it doesn't mean as also that we have we have um it, that the we believe that the Father and the Son are the same person. It doesn't make sense. But rather there's one God person and one Jesus Christ person because in John 5 26 the son has his has own life as the father have have okay they are two persons as the Bible says in in John 18 in John 8 sorry in John 8 it says is this John 8 16 it says um, let's start in 14 Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of, of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came, and wider I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come, and wider I go. Ye judge after the flesh, and I judge no man. And yet if I, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. It's very good comparative of Jesus Christ and the Father as a two men. I am one that bear witness of myself and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. So they are two persons. They are not the same. What, who, what are the, dif, the, the, the similarities of them? The glory. You can glory God, the Father, if you don't glory the Son. As the Bible says in John, John 5.23. Let's read. It's this. All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth the Son, honoreth the Father which hath sent him. So if you honor the Son, you honor in the Father. As if you believe in the Son, you believe in the Father. If you know the Son, you know the Father. Because this is the, the image of God. The perfect image of God. The invisible God. This is the image of God. The visible God. Because God is invisible. This is the visible. So that's why unto the Son is said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's why when Thomas saw Jesus Christ, he saw the glory of God. Okay? And the glory of God that he saw that this is my Lord and this is my God. My Lord and my God. It doesn't mean that... Oh, so this is the meaning of this. Jesus Christ is not God as himself. Because there's, we, we have two gods. No. Jesus Christ not, is not another God. Okay, Jesus is not a different God. Jesus Christ is God because of the representation of the Father for us. God, He represents the Father. He is the image of the Father. He represents the image and glory of God. And what is the glory of God? The Rock, the Savior, the Lord, the First and the Last, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, rule, Ruler and Captain of Peace, or the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. We believe in He is the Prince. Acts 5.31 And He is the, the Prince of Peace in Ephesians 2.13-17 He is the King of Kings in Revelation, Lord of Lords, Spirit, Light, Love, and Word. He is the Word of God. Okay, but we don't believe in two word of God. We don't believe in two love. We don't believe in two lights. God is light. But why the Bible says that Jesus is the the light of the world? John eight twelve. Why? Because he is the brightness of the glory of God. God is light. Okay, and Christ is Christ is the brightness of the glory of that light. That's why Christ is the light of the world. Like this. 
This is the light. For example, this is Jesus Christ, the image of God. But God is the battery. Okay? Even the battery is not light, but the source of light. So, so if if we turn on this, if we turn this on, you can see the light. For example, that is Jesus Christ. And God is the light and He is the brightness of that light. He is the brightness of the glory of God. That's why when, in Revelation 1, when, when John saw the Son of Man, he saw His face. It's very, very bright. It's, it's very bright like as a sun, as a sun, like a, a solar, a solar. Like a sun, it's brightest like a sun. It, you can you can look in his face because the glory of God was in his image. The image of God. That's why when we saw Jesus Christ, we saw the Father because he is the image of the Father. That's why when in 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 in, in John fourteen, this is the reason why. Um, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficient us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long, so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He hath had seen me, hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou? Then show us the Father. Believe it thou that, not that I am the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Those miracles, that is God's works. How? Because when Jesus became the Christ, remember in Acts 2.36, God made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus who was crucified. When Jesus um, um, became the, the Christ, the anointed one, the Spirit of God was rest upon him and what is the event of that of that prophecy in Isaiah 61 verse 1 when he baptized by John the Baptist and the spirit of God is like a form of, of the of the dove and rest upon him it's a symbol it's a vision that the spirit of God shall rest is rest upon him According to the prophecy, he fulfilled that prophecy. So when he became a Christ, he became the anointed one as the meaning of Christ. So when he became the Christ, he preached the good, the good news, the good tidings. He, he performed miracles because that is God's works. That's why when God, the Spirit of God rests upon him, as he said that as the the Father that dwelleth in me, He doeth the works. Okay? As the Isaiah 35 said, that God um, well, is going to come to us in Isaiah 35, verse 4 to 6, it says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not, behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then he then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deep shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. This is the works of God through Jesus Christ. So let so it's very clear. Now, before in my previous video, the I said that Jesus Christ is just the Lord of a Christian. He is not the Lord of the heaven and earth. I admit that I am wrong because God made him a Lord of the heaven and, and earth. How do I say that? What is my evidence? Matthew 28 verse. Matthew 28 verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay? So Jesus Christ became the Lord of the heaven and the earth. And, and once more, one, 
another evidence that Christ is the Lord of the heaven and earth because the glory of God is in Him. How? He is the, 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 the power of God as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.24. In, in Philippians Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11, it says that wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in earth and things in, in, and things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God the Father. So it's all the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father is in the, in the Christ. That's why in the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.19, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Because this is the Lord. We don't have two lords. We don't have two gods. We, do, we, also, we just have one God. And this God is God the Father. This Lord is Lord the Father. And this anointed one, the Spirit of God shall rest upon him. And he teach the he preached the gospel. Okay? And we when God highly exalted him, every knee shall bow. This is the Savior. This is the Prince. This is the Prince of Peace. Everlasting Father. Mighty God. That's why God said, the throne of God is forever and ever. You know what is the meaning of Isaiah 9.6? The Isaiah 9.6 is this. Okay, let's be unbiased. Isaiah 9.6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given, and the government shall, shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and the peace and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth or even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts lord of hosts will perform this so what is the reason why how he became the mighty god the everlasting father because of the glory of God that re rests upon him. He is the visible God. And the invisible God will rest upon him. He is the image of that invisible God. You can see God. Jesus Christ, no man, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son of the Father, he hath declared him. Because this body is the declaration Okay, this Son of God is the image of that invisible God because there's one Father that dwelleth in Him. Okay, that's why He said in Isaiah and in Hebrews 1 8, Thy throne of God is forever and ever. That is the connection of those verses. So we believe in one God the Father, one Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth because of the authority that gave Him to Him. But the, here's a here's the truth. Last thing. Okay. After that, He is the Christ, He is the Lord, He is the Savior, He is the Prince, okay? After that, it, that is not forever. By the way, it's, it's sad to say that that is not forever. Why? Because of this reason. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26 to 28, it says, Remember in Psalms 110 verse 1, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down at my right hand. Until I make your enemies thy footstool. Sorry for my English or sorry for my... I don't remember the verse but I remember the context. In 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 15 26 to 28, it says is this. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's why God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So this is the truth that we don't have two gods, we don't have two lords. We only one God in one person of Jesus Christ. In the God invisible is God, Lord, Savior, Rock, Alpha, and Omega, the first and the last. And when we see Christ, 
we see the God, Lord, Savior, Rock, and in the first and the last, and because He is the image of that invisible God. He is a human, and that Spirit is God that rests upon Him. One person of God, one person of the human, one person, one life of a God, one life of a human. No, no one God in two to three persons. We don't believe in that. According to our study, our according to our script. A scripture research but one God's person in one human person one person of God in one human person one invisible and one image of the invisible one God in one mediator so that is our final and latest understanding of our studying the Bible so in our next videos soon in the future we are not just talking about this. We are also talking about all doctrines, about law, about about great tribulation, about about salvation, about angels, about about doctrines in the church, about about covering hairs of women and men. So we are talking all of the doctrines of the Bible and also another books soon in in another in a future video so thank you for the for watching let's stick in the truth i hope you understand the the one god one lord and one spirit as the bible says okay one god one lord one mediator one spirit so that is the verses i hope you will understand that we have just one god we don't have one god in two person to three person we just one God in one person. Okay. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and the truth will set you free.